And we're back with A43 TV, and I'm still sitting here with Dean Huff, and we we're having a great conversation about the new building, the program, right here at the Culinary Institute of the South. So something else we're going to talk about now is the Foodseum. Yes. Which is right over there. And I, it's a new word to me. When I walked in, I was, wasn't sure what that all means. So tell us, <laughs> what does that mean? Well, you're right. It is a, a, a museum that focuses on food. And so one of the concepts that we, we came up with when, when building this with Beaufort County is we wanted a place where tourists could come and actually experience the Southern food and culture. You know, we're still one of the most popular uh, foods or destinations for culture and, and cuisine in the world is Southern culture and Southern food. As you were asking me all, earlier, what do people ask for? You know, when people come to Charleston and they come to the low country here in Bluffton or Hilton Head, they want the shrimp and grits. They of want course. the, you know, they want the she crab soup. So what we wanted to do, because it is so such a rich culture, we wanted to talk about the foods that are indigenous to this area. And we want to talk about how we got, how they got here you know, and what makes them so popular. And I think people really enjoy that. So you're gonna have murals and people can see on the menus and how it all, we're talking about the rice. Rice, yes. Well, as you know, Carolina Gold, uh, we were talking earlier, uh, in the early 1700s, uh, Carolina Gold, this was the, the, the richest of all the 13 British colonies. We made more money than New York, Philadelphia, because of the rice culture that was here. Uh, I also said, uh, you know, you can see, still see the rice fields from space, is what I heard on the History Channel. And it's one of the, still one of the biggest man-made structures in the world. So it made a lot of people here rich. It brought a lot of culture here. It also a lot of, brought a lot of fashion and, and, and really rich Europeans that could actually take advantage of that, that rice culture. Well, this goes with every time we're out and doing a show, we always note that there's so much culture and history in our area, but now we get to talk about the, the food part of it. Usually it's history and everything like that. So this is a sense, in a sense, a place where students will learn about the history and the culture of the area of the food part. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, so w once you enter uh, when we open the food museum, you know, we're gonna ask the question, being a learning institution, do you think you know Southern food? And so we'll have almost like um, a little scavenger hunt where you can actually go through and find different clues of Southern barbecue, you know, verse, or what's Appalachia, what is indigenous to that area. And uh, it's gonna be a, a, a cool little thing that you can actually go through and learn. And we get so many, so far, you know, we just, we just open and we get so many people wanting to know about that. And they're really wanting to know about the culture and, and how okra got here. You know, we think of boiled peanuts as being from the South. And if I can say Southern, boiled peanuts, but actually it came from West Africa and oh. actually across uh, to South America and came up, but we claim boil peanuts, don't we? It's a summer. Yes, we do. Yes. Oh, wow. So there, there's all these little clues. And then when you get to the end of the food museum, uh, we'll have a spot where you can actually uh, write down your favorite memory around a food dish or around a moment of food. Mine was with my grandmother mm -hmm. in a wood, um, wood burning stove, making those huge big cat head biscuits with southern sorghum and smelling the wood in the stove and just being around that and excited to watch her make those biscuits and being part of that. So oh, you'll wow. be able to tell your story and we're going to post those. Uh, That's so those neat. Notes. And you're so right. You just triggered memories that I have of my grandmother's right. house and, and things like that growing up as a kid. So that's so true. You, everyone has those stories, I think. Right. And, and we think by doing that, you'll have this aha moment, you know, like, I really want to share that story. And we want to keep everything. We will have some uh, some displays that are permanent, but we will have, we'll be turning over displays. We'll probably follow the seasons as things uh, move. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we have the restaurant behind us. So if you do have restaurant uh, reservations in the restaurant, now maybe you can go and explore or taste that um, I, farm to table local yeah, dish. I love that idea. So let's talk about the restaurant. Yeah, because so what is that going to be about? We know about it because you told us, but the viewers <laughs> do not. So how right. come and enjoy the experience? What, tell us the details. Well, uh, we'll have reservations only. Uh, actually, the food will be cooked by this, like one of the last classes that the students take. Uh, mm -hmm. So they've gone through all the most of their classes, maybe a few academics, and so they will be actually cooking the food with an instructor in the restaurant. You will also be served by students uh, in the restaurant. So I tell you know I tell guests usually you know they may be a little nervous when they first start out uh, because I think it's very important for students to know the front of the house as well as the back of the house. We know that 76% of the reason why people leave a restaurant is service. It's service. So we want to make sure that those, both of those component, components are there. 
But to, to come in uh, and experience that is going to be, yeah, it's going to be special. Yeah, great for the students, great for the everyone. Are we, yeah, are we lunch and dinner? What, what are hours? Right now we're going to do a lunch only, okay. but as we expand, we will do lunch and dinner. And when do you expect that to open? About three weeks. Uh, oh. So our students, as we know, just said, just started Monday. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, uh, we have the menu. So they'll be practicing the menu. They'll be practicing that, that plating skill. You know, you're putting that magic on a plate. I always tell students, if you look at a frame of a picture, uh, you know, the outside of a plate, that's the frame. The inside is where we do our magic. When we start looking at viscosity of a sauce, uh, you know, height, color, all of these things must match on a plate. I know. So much goes into it that you'd never even think about it as far as the Well, it person. is culinary arts, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this place is going to rock and roll. I know. We it's are so ready exciting to, go. to be here. I'm... So we're sitting in the future space of the food sim. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to coming back another time when it's finished and doing this again, right? Yes, we'll, we will be doing the food museum in phases. Uh, we had a meeting yesterday, probably the final phase, won't be till probably close to the fall. But as we have certain things move in, there will be things to see and do. And of course, we're already having people calling for tours, especially high schools I and was just schools. gonna say, this is yes. gonna provide a great field trip opportunity for our local students. Exactly. What, better what a learning to... opportunity. And we, usually, I taught high school uh, one day in my life uh, for four years, but usually, ask students about you know their local life and the local culture and they're clueless uh, they just really so this will give them a great opportunity to understand their culture yeah, well Dean Hop, this is wonderful it's been wonderful to meet you and well, thank you. it was nice to meet Anna and I'm telling you this place is just thriving and seriously mm -hmm. if you have any interest in being in hospitality do check out their website because there's room here and also you can shadow and come and see for yourself before you have to make that big decision mm -hmm. so this is a 43 TV where communities come to speak